Welcome back to the morning meeting on Talk Radio 930 WTAD. Brian Nichols along with Sean Seacrease on a Monday morning. And it is uh, time for our Snelling Personnel Services interview. Uh, one of our uh, frequent guests and a guy that we uh, talked with uh, actually not too long ago, but there's been some developments on a, a story that we followed from the beginning, that being the Pigford Settlement. Congressman Steve King from Iowa joins us this morning on the morning meeting. Congressman, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for taking the time on such short notice. Uh, Pigford is something that we've talked with you before and something that is kind of at the height of its, mm, I guess, of development because it's it, they passed it just a few days ago, and this thing's scheduled to go through here pretty quick. Well, it is. It's um, as, as I understand this, this is back channel, but um, that the president has, the rumor says, that he's scheduled to sign the Pigford Farms legislation on Wednesday. Uh, that will be our president of the United States signing a bill that lots of people understand is slavery reparations. And, I mean, that's a blunt way of describing what's going on. But I've got a stack of these Pigford applications in my hand right now. They've been in my possession for years. There were um, people that worked for the USDA and Farm Service that were deployed to Washington for, for a lot of places across this country who came back sick to their stomachs at how there were people being paid because they were African Americans who uh, were supposed to have been those who were discriminated against by the by the Department of Agriculture, and uh, they, they found out that uh, they could game the system, and thousands showed up to do so, and the taxpayers got gamed. And uh, I have stood up against this. Uh, Michelle Bachman has, Bob Goodlatte of Virginia. There are others that are sick to their stomach but have not yet stood up. At the House voted, um, even, it, even it was pushed through the House last week, and uh, there were 152 in the House that voted no, and that tells me at least 152 understand the level of fraud that's here. And there were others that probably voted for it that didn't want to take the criticism. So I want, the, I want America to know. That, that Barack Obama was one of the drivers on this. He began as a very, very urban United States senator out of Chicago uh, that initiated this the second round of this legislation as a United States senator, but he'd already made the decision to run for president. And uh, they nothing passed in the House or Senate that reauthorized the opening of the largest civil rights class action suit in the history of the country. But nonetheless... The Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack, and the Attorney General, Eric Holder, sat down with John Boyd, the head of the Black Farmers Association, and the three of them came to this number of $1.15 billion additional dollars on top of the $1.05 billion that had already been paid out, and they pushed for an appropriation for that money without congressional authorization. They got that job done. They ran over the top of us. The President's been driving this thing out of the White House, and... Uh, now he's poised to sign the equivalent of the equivalent of slavery reparations to black farmers. And in fact, the decision on the, the opinion on the first round of Pigford, there's two components, Pigford one and Pigford two. And Pigford one, Judge Paul Friedman starts his opinion with these words: "40 acres and a mule." I don't know how much plainer it needs to get. We'll get to the social ramifications of this in just a moment, Congressman, but the financial numbers behind this bill are staggering. When you add the payments to the debt forgiveness, to the uh, dearth and taxes that are going to be created by this, this is a number that's going to have to be passed on. It can't just be made up. Well, that's right. It, and this, here we are. We're borrowing 41 cents out of every dollar the federal government is spending, but these unnecessary expenses, we're borrowing 100 cents on those dollars that are spent. And it, it comes to this, that, and by the way, Judge Friedman called it the $50,000 per claimant as a virtually an automatic payment. Is this what the judge said, and yet he's, he approved it. So we're at $50,000 into the pocket of anybody that can claim that they farmed or wanted to farm and uh, that they were claimed that they were denied a loan or a program benefit and claim that they were discriminated against. They don't have to prove it. They just need to have a friend sign that says, oh, yeah, he complained to the right person. That's the extent of it. And so it's $50,000 automatic under those conditions, plus 100% debt forgiveness uh, to any debt that they might owe to the USDA Farm Service Administration if, if they're an applicant. Judge Freeman estimated it would be $100,000 average debt forgiveness. And of all of that, the $50,000 check plus the debt forgiveness 
there's an additional 25 percent that comes out of the the treasury of the of the USDA and goes to the IRS to pay their tax liability. So we're at you know additional 25 percent. You're 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 looking at $150,000 average benefit. That's the calculated average benefit. Plus then it would be $37,500 going to the IRS out of each one of these. We had 18,000 black farmers. We have 94,000 claims. It's just astonishing how many people could be recruited to step forward and say, oh, yeah, I farmed. I wanted to farm. They discriminated against me. I said, so Johnny will sign for me, and Tom will sign for Johnny. And then the two of them can walk in and walk out with their $100,000 between the two of them, uh, plus the attorneys get paid, plus the IRS gets paid. Well, and then you have Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack saying there's only three cases of fraud in 20,000 claims. What do you make of that? I think that that will be a position that was, I mean, that's a calculated position. That isn't a, an off-the-cuff, intense debate discussion number that might be uh, corrected. They calculated that. Uh, the, the FBI has concluded three convictions for fraud. There are a lot of questions about what put the brakes on further FBI investigations, and we intend to look into that. But to argue that there were only three cases of fraud because they only achieved three convictions, and um, I have not read this language, but the report on the language is that the, the judge prohibited them from asking questions about the applicants because it was an invasion of privacy. So there's a shield that's been put up to some degree. However official that shield may be, I don't yet know. Um, but, yeah, three, three cases of fraud. Uh, there are a lot more than three cases of fraud. There are at least hundreds of cases of fraud. There likely are thousands. There may well be tens of thousands of cases of fraud. And uh, we owe it to the American people to shine a light on this, whether or not the president signs that bill on Wednesday. And I'm absolutely convinced he will. There's no indication he'll do anything else. This bill has me nothing but frustrated and, and angry, Congressman. I have to tell you, we get we get and we we can't ask questions on an official investigative level because it's a breach of privacy, and yet we have uh, law-abiding, well-intentioned American citizens being uh, molested. Some would say at airports across the country, and now we have the White House driving socialism. You mentioned the president has been the driver on the Pigford Farms case. They have done. The, we all know the government has no money. They basically use the Americans' money for programs that they think need, or need to be in place to run the country. And now you can't have the government give money to these people without the next step. It was taken from private citizens and redistributed to these people. This just smacks of social redistribution to me. Well, you are, you are exactly right. Under their justification, it is a redistribution of a wealth that we don't have. I mean, it's, it's actually, and it, it, it works like this. We'll borrow the money from the Chinese. We'll hand it over to African Americans who farmed or said they wanted to farm. And then that borrowed money from the Chinese, you'll see interest rates go up as America's credit goes down. And then our children and grandchildren will have to take accept the austerity that's being accepted all across Europe today by them trying to get themselves back into the with a legitimate foundation underneath them. We will have the austerity movement hit us uh, pretty soon here in this country, but interest rates will still go up. Children and grandchildren then will pay the interest as a burden every year of their life and their tax load until such time as we reduce the deficit and pay that debt down. And so in a way, it, it, it is. It's, it is putting the burden on our grandchildren to pay reparations for slavery that took place 150 years ago. And the span of this across the generations, the, how they transfer the wealth through intergenerationally and interracially, is just astonishing when you think of it in that scope. Talking with Iowa Congressman Steve King this morning on the morning meeting, how can the president say this is about anything other than, I mean, he talks about that it's fair and it's just, but how, how, how can he spend this as anything other uh, than race-related? Uh, you talked about it earlier, it's, it's saying that he's, has nothing to do with farming. He he doesn't know the slightest thing about it, and yet here he is pushing the charge on this. Well, it, it is. It's focused exclusively on race. It says so. It doesn't actually even say African Americans. It says black farmers in the decision. And uh, why did the president get involved in that? I've seen the numbers. Um, I've got to guess a little bit at this, but the total number of black farmers in Illinois. If you look, think he was interested in it as a senator from Illinois. Um, no, if he actually went downstate, I presume he might have. 
But uh, <laughs> we don't see have any film of him walking around in the hog yard or the cattle yard or you know anything like like a rural senator would do. But the number was something like 78 black farmers in Illinois and 163 applicants uh, that had been discriminated against in Illinois. Now, that'd be an interesting test case. We could actually go through and scour every one of those, interview any of those uh, applicants, and interview the people that worked in the Farm Services Administrations to, to see where this came from and then identify it. There are thousands. And we also have reports that I think we'll be able to bring forward in a, in a truthful and um, in an under oath way of um, African-American women that worked in Farm Service Administration offices that never farmed, wanted to, well, they may have wanted to farm, but never applied for a program that still applied for the, applied for the $50,000 Pigford check. They were there handling other applications, so they apparently decided they would sign themselves up and cash in. Uh, I don't know that Tom Vilsack under, uncovered those, but I can tell you there are a lot more than three cases of fraud, and uh, that one I'm very confident we will be able to get the USDA in a position where um, they will be, uh, let me say, either willing to correct that statement or wish they had. Well, you are uh, you are leading the charge against it, Congressman King, and the, the President and Tom Vilsack are leading the charge for it. Uh, a USDA employee says it's the largest scam against the federal taxpayers in the history of the United States, and the biggest, uh, a black farmer says the biggest ripoff the country's ever known. Now, on the flip side of that, the Black Farmers Association president says, no problem if non-farmers get settlement money. If you're an African-American, you deserve $50,000. I, I don't know how much clearer it can get. So, Well, that's right. And, and for the, further, the president of the Black Farmers being John Boyd, and he and I uh, did a discussion on MSNBC last week. Mm -hmm. uh, first words out of his mouth were to call me a racist. Right. And he, he also said in, in that exchange, and I'm not sure if this was edited in or out, but he said there is no fraud in Pigford. There's zero fraud. So we've got the Secretary of Agriculture said there are only three cases out of 94,000. We've got John Boyd, the head of the Black Farmers, saying there are no cases out of 94,000. And I guess in his definition, or Tom Vilsack's, since you don't have to prove anything, then, then they've already set up a class action settlement that will accept any application. You don't have to be particularly fraudulent. But I would disagree to this extent that it still, it still requires you to attest that you were discriminated against, that you tried to farm, and you were turned down. And we will be looking eventually at the data that shows us, not just state by state, but county by county, the, the African-American populations within the county, the number of applications, the number of farmers within the county, the black farmers within the county, the numbers of those who claim to be discriminated against. And the, to the extent that I have some knowledge about that, it's almost the same percentage of applicants in each of the counties all across the country um, in proportion to the African-American share of the population. And so that would presume then that every county had the same level of discrimination. And I can't believe that. I work in and out of these county offices for most of my working life. Each office has a different culture. The director is elected by the participants in the program in that county. And there will be some counties that perhaps had 100% discrimination. There will be other counties that had a completely different culture where there was 0% discrimination. And uh, that data will help us, too, as we dig into this in the upcoming Congress. Well, the idea that there's no fraud in, in Pigford, it's the government handing out money that you apply for. I don't care who it is. You've got to assume that there's at least some level of fraud <laughs> regardless. But obviously we've seen that there is within this. So, Congressman King, uh, we're short on time this morning. We do appreciate your time. Of course, uh, I also want to mention for folks that really want to get into the meat of this thing, uh, biggovernment.com is doing a whole uh, a bunch of stuff on it this week leading up to the signing of this bill, if it does indeed happen. So check that out at uh, biggovernment.com. But Congressman Steve King of Iowa, thank you for your time this morning. Well, thank you, and I took a look at biggovernment.com this morning, too, and they're unfolding some very good information there. So so thanks a lot, and we'll keep talking about this long after the bill gets signed. The American people need to know the truth. All right. Thanks, Congressman. Didn't catch all of the morning meeting? Get the podcast at WTAD.com.